Give me something to believe in. Earth below me. Sky above me. Fire within me. Brought to you by UPRN Network. I'm Trish Mo, and this is The Missing Piece. Good evening. I'm Trish. This is It's Mo Monday. Again, it's, it's Crazy Monday. We are broadcasting live from New Orleans 105.3 FM and UPRN Radio Network. Um, gosh, it's Monday again. Um, and I want to thank Carnation, first of all, for sponsoring this hour and all of, of our listeners as well for showing up. So, um, my guest and I, I'm, I'm super excited to have you, Eric. Eric Erickson, um, he is a writer, host, award-winning award filmmaker and actor. Um, he was a journalist for the Chicago Tribune, Roswell Daily Record, numerous other newspapers and magazines, media outlets, authored, co-authored nonfiction books on historical topics, like the Civil War, Old West, and Viking culture founder of Viking Dog Entertainment, um, a Los Angeles-based film and publishing content creator. And one of the biggest things that drew me to you um, was um, also raises money for wolf rescue in North America, which is a huge passion of mine as well. So welcome, Eric. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you. When you run and it all together like that, I feel like there's, I feel like I've done too much. It's <laughs> I didn't even read. I only got through like the first paragraph. I, I didn't. I, I didn't, haven't even read all of. It. I mean, I've, you know, I started reading um, some of your books, and you know, I, I read up on your latest um, film that came out. Truth is that correct? Mm -hmm. right, um, yeah. And I'm like, man, I I'm glad I you know I invited you because all I was going for the wolf thing. I'm like that was I like I opened up a whole other factor of coolness here. So. So, yeah, so, so I'm excited. Um, man, so you're, um, we talked about this, you're, you're on the East Coast, Craig. But, West Coast. Or East West Coast, Coast, sorry, West Coast, yes. California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of tell us how you kind, how you, where it began, I guess. I was born in a log cabin years ago. No, I mean, where do you start with that? It's been 87 years. I've, you know, it's, I, it feels like it's someday. It's, it's only Monday. Sorry, that was totally um, a Titanic quote. Probably I think, just, quoted for that just, just even, you know, even growing up, it was, I had this whole kind of approach where um, I didn't want to be satisfied with just doing one thing, you know? So even as a kid, like my heroes were um, Renaissance Men, you know, Thomas Jefferson, Bucker Bonsai, Doc Savage, you know, these like character, these literary characters that were like multi experience in all of these different things. So even as a young person, I was like, I'm not going to be satisfied just doing one thing. So, I mean, I um, even in high school, I was writing plays and I was hosting radio shows. And, you know, I, wow. I just wanted to be I want I knew I wanted to be a storyteller, but. I didn't want to limit myself as what way I wanted to tell those stories, you know, what medium that I was, I was going to be bolted to. So, you know, it started with writing plays and then I went to USC and I learned it, got into the film industry and started writing and acting and just, it always was about the adventure versus staying on a certain path. So if an opportunity came up and it took me one direction, you know, I was, I was acting for a while and I just, it wasn't fulfilling me. And I got the opportunity to start working as a reporter and the Roswell daily record called and they said, do you want to come out to New Mexico and be a beat reporter? And I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun. Right, you know? that, so, that's crazy. Yeah. It's so my whole life's been like that. It's, it's, it's hard for some people to wrap their minds around that. They want I, to compartmentalize you mm -hmm. and it, it's hard to pin me down. I get that too, because I, I have ADHD, so terrible. So I get really bored doing one thing. So when I started my own, you know, art business, things like that, I, I and then I do photography and I do this and that, you know, personal mm -hmm. training, all these other things. People are like, why do you have like 20 different jobs a week? Well, because I don't just, I want to do all the things. 
and I can't just pick one. So <laughs> well, I don't, do you pick it or does it pick you? I mean, isn't there a bit it's of that? It's me. like, it pops up and it's like, wait, nope. You're yeah. Come and then I'm like, scroll. And, and then there's else. something else that picks me. So, <laughs> 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 and then I get run over by a damn train. So, so uh, you know, we're only here for so long, you know, I don't want to ever want to wake up one day and be on my deathbed and be like, Oh man, I wish I'd written that certain oh, thing or I wish I experienced that one thing you know so, um and, and I think that's what what was really impressive also um you know if you visit um your website it, it's you've got a, a complete variety of you know like I said the the workout apparel that also um contributes to a good cause that's that's a big deal you know representing um physical um, health and things like that, as well as the variety, I guess, of your, you know, being, being a writer and artist and stuff myself, a lot of, a lot of artists or writers stick to one specific, um, genre or, or theme or, or whatever, you know, their entire career kind of, and, and yours are, are pretty, um, pretty different. So what, Oh, and I almost forgot about your podcast. I don't know how I could forget. Yeah. <laughs> I just and I literally that's just finished one. an interview. I just finished interviewing um, a cybersecurity former NSA agent. And we talked about cyber attacks in the, uh, the dark web and anonymous. So, I mean, again, there's like, so you're talking about, oh, well, you did the wolf. So you did that. Well, yeah, I just got off of, just got off of the former clandestine agent. So it's like. <laughs> If it's interesting to me, I hope that it's going to be interesting to other Absolutely. people. And and that's not just the podcast. I mean, that's that's why, like you said, it's you know you're writing these different types of books. Um, you know, you 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 mentioned um, the nonfiction ones that I've done, and then you know mm -hmm. then I wrote Ascension, which is like a it's kind of a Dan. It's been compared to like a Dan Brown metaphysical type of book about you know the afterlife, but it's got adventure and it's kind of a Clive Cussler kind of attitude to it. And then I have a book that starts dropping next week. That's a traditional Western. That's, um, you know, just kind of the old school man with no name, Clint Eastwood, mm -hmm. page turner, you know, and again, it comes back to it. If it's interesting to me and there's a story to tell, I want to find the medium that lends itself to, to that story. Um, so, and that's what the podcast too is like every episode is something that's interesting to me. And it's a story that I think other people will find interesting to them. I and the name so. of your podcast is The Open Highway. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I just want to, I didn't know. Um, and I will put that, um, I put that in the, the link is on my page as well. So um, how do you, how do you come up with these um, for your fiction ones? How, how, what's the inspiration behind them? It's some of them are explorations like um, Ascension is a good example. I've always been fascinated by death, but not in kind of uh, right. not in kind of a, the weird thing is like I'm fascinated by it, but I hate skulls. So not that I hate them, but it's like some people are like they adorn themselves with skulls right. and they use it as jewelry to me. I'm just like, that's not me, but I'm fascinated by uh, the cultural and societal way that we approach it or we don't approach it, you know, that we're frightened by it or religiously. And so, you know, that was something I wanted to explore and the way that I wanted to explore it was in a fictional adventure book. So it just kind of lent itself to that, you know, and I'm a big fan of the old West and it's like, well, of course, if I'm going to enter into that, I'm going to write in the classic Western kind of way. Um, so it's just really like, how it lends itself to the story that you want to tell. Um, yeah. That kind of well, well, and the, the reason I ask is because the different themes of, of your, of your books um, obviously have, have a lot to do with, you know, the characters, metaphys like you said, the metaphysical world or paranormal or um, things mm -hmm. like that. So um, have you ever, as far as yourself, are you, you know, clairvoyant, intuitive, things like that? Um, I'm, I'm you, not, I'm more, I always, I always kind of joke. I'm like Mulder. It's like, I, I want to believe, but you really have, I'm, I'm very skeptical and like the logical base of it, but I'm always open to having that discussion, which I think is part of the problem in our society is even people that 
don't necessarily believe in, in everything. They don't open themselves to at least have the discussion and, and, right. and entertain the ideas and have fun with that. You know, I, when it, like when it comes to UFOs, it's like, I want to believe, I think there's, um, the more of a possibility that we're, that we're not alone than that we are alone, but it, I'm, I'm going to look at what I see and I want to analyze it and make sure before I jump on the bandwagon and be like, Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. But like with the <laughs> podcast, I try and have people on the show. I had, um, you know, I've had a couple people, uh, who I had one woman who was, um, a JFK conspiracy theorist. And I use that because literally it was the conspiracy of the people right. came together. Um, you know, and that was interesting. And I had a host of, um, the, who talked about the Hill, uh, abduction, you know, and that was fascinating because we got to get into the minutia of it and the science of it. And he taught, he had interviewed them, um, and he had tapes and everything. So it's, I don't, I'm sin. I have synesthesia, which is a, which is an odd condition, which makes my world a little different, but that's not a clairvoyant kind of thing. But I think that definitely lends itself to my artistic outlook and how I interpret things. What and is, what is synesthesia? So s synesthesia is a, it's a, um, when babies are born, all of their senses are intertwined. And then as you gradually get older, your senses break off. Some people like yours yeah. truly, they didn't do that. So you taste shapes and you hear colors and it affects the way you act. Um, my ex-wife always used to joke, um, if chicken wasn't cooked properly, I would taste triangles and I would, you know, and I would be like, Oh, it's triangle chicken. Wow. And she's like, Oh, it's not cooked properly. Or I hear, I, I experience blue with certain musical tones and, and letters have personalities like Jackson Pollock had it. And, and, you know, so it, it shapes the way you see the world and even right. the way you're writing a sentence, it has to have a certain, a certain form. Yeah. It has to have a certain pattern or else you look at it and you're like, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. You know, well, so. and you know, I, I think that goes back a lot to our programming because, um, when I, you know, when I was in school, when I was in kindergarten, I, they could not get me to write with my right hand. I got my hand slapped with ruler. Mm -hmm. So eventually I was taught to write with my left hand, but make it look, like a right-handed person's writing, which to mm -hmm. me, I'm like, that doesn't. <laughs> so, so, um, did you go back? Like did that, you, you know, were you we're, able to go back though? And, and eventually, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But I'm curious. No. Did you go back to writing with your left hand? I'm left-handed. Well, I'm, I'm ambidextrous now kind of. So, okay, all right. um, but I do write, I write with my left hand, like a right-handed person. Huh. Like I slant the, I don't do the, you know, a lot of left-handed people hold their, their pen or pencil or whatever differently or slant their letters the opposite way of a right-handed person. I slant my letters like a, or like a left-handed person they do. I slant mine like a right-handed person, which they said takes a lot like for your brain to, you know, so it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, but things like that, you know, because, because of society, we actually had to kind of reprogram ourselves to, to yeah, do it. Yeah. It's and, and it shapes who we are. People. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my um, grandmother used to say when, when we figured out what I had, she's like, can we get you cured? And I'm like, why would you want to? I'm like, this is cool. Like, why would you want to yeah. cure me? Like, it affects how I see the world and it affects how I am artistically. So my mom always laughed at that. She's like, we're not going to cure you. And I'm like, it's my superpower. <laughs> it's it, like I mean, it, it probably is. That's, that's <laughs> funny. Um, that, but that's what I was going to say is interesting about you because I see that, that you are, you know, highly intuitive and stuff, especially with your, your, your writing and your art, you know, that's, that's another Claire um, gift to uh, just freely because artists use literally a different part of their, it, it, it's a different part of their brain um, mm -hmm. for that creative function. So, th so that's why a lot of people, um, you know, if they're in an accident or something and come to, and all of a sudden they can, they can sing or they can, you know, they're really good at art, whereas they never had any interest or touched it in their life, you know? So um, I had a guest on last week. Um, she, and in, she intuitively created art um, and codes that were also that had sound um which is fascinating so that when you, you were talking about the um you know you see um like the chicken and and yeah. shapes and stuff i it, it's kind of 
all the same um, idea, you know, because colors also, every color has a frequency. Every word mm -hmm. has a frequency. So they're, inter they're intertwined like that, but we're taught that it's all separate is the problem. You're right. So, right. so, so if you look behind me, I mean, obviously people who are listening can't, but you can and anybody who watches, you can see the artwork that's on my wall. So I started painting about a year ago and that's, my mother's a painter. She's been painting for decades. And during the pandemic, she finally sent me a, a, a huge box full of paints. And she's like, you need to start painting or you're going to go crazy. Yes. And so I started painting and the way that I paint is an interpretation of music. So that is, you know, I listen to a lot of classic rock and there's, but I know there's certain ones that I may, I'm trying to get what's in my head through my hand, through the paint and express sound on to through with the color that I'm hearing as well. So you're absolutely right. What you're saying, you know, um, I forgot what I was going to say on that. <laughs> yes, that's fascinating. Have you ever animated your painting? You know, technology is fascinating. I do that sometimes to line drawings and stuff I've painted. Um, you can use these apps now to animate them to the music. And it's interesting Ooh. what frequency artificial intelligence puts, you know, connects with your own art. It's, it's the most amazing thing. That would be weird. I might like look at it and be like, no, that's wrong. That's not oh, the right thing. Well, sound. yes, <laughs> it, it's both. You know, I'm like, mm, that's that's not where I was going with that. But that's that's cool and yeah. interesting, you know, at the same time, because it's still my work combined with like a machine. So. I'll have to try that. The, the, <laughs> one, the way I do it, like right now I'm concentrating on the color and then you can see the shapes, but it's also texture. What you can't see is there's mm -hmm. texture to all the paints. So it's trying to bring together these different aspects of it and then to put another one like someone like like that the sound that's that's just a whole another level that's an interesting way to go great I, now i got another project <laughs> i got to work on All right, great. so what i which is interesting because <laughs> what i started doing you know i in photography um i was like okay i would take a picture of something like in nature say and mm. then i would paint it and then I would add another media medium to it and and make it textured somehow or use clay or build it up, you know. And then I would animate it to music. <laughs> so, I know I'm extra like that. So No, I'm just like, how do you have the time? <laughs> so well, I mean it was stuff that I, I would go back on that I had done years ago, maybe even oh, okay. or, and be like oh you know that might be a cool picture to paint or that might be a cool painting to upgrade you know just so not all at the same time which is also yeah. another interesting to see how you've evolved you know in your art over mm -hmm. years Absolutely. we had um a listener though asked which is a good point i w was going to get to this um in roswell i'm sure you have people ask this all the time i was born um outside of roswell so it's it's been a big part of my life as well oh wow um, man what the the listener asks what are your thoughts on the battle at dolce base i'm sure you got asked about aliens I love dolce those. base <laughs> that one i i don't i don't have a lot of that one i don't know a lot about so i can't really give you i won't even pretend that that i have an opinion on that well dolce I, I base really is in northern uh let me think about this north what eastern new mexico northwestern new mexico i don't know. it's northern yeah, that it's not. It, it's Am not. I not near, it, when it's not was that in the forties? When did when did that happen? Oh man. Maybe I'm knowing it by another name. I'm I'm just not because I know a lot about that stuff. Yeah, I, just, I and, and that's the thing that this that specific battle was nobody knew about it um, hmm. or forever. So and as far as my, you know, everybody knows my, uh, from, from chasing as far as my, um, past UFO issues, I'm, I'm the same as you. I, I'm a historical medium. Mm -hmm. So the fact-based part of me, um, and logical part of my brain every time, e even when I was from the time I was younger, when I would, you know, see spirits or get messages and things like that. I'm like, 
but no, that can't be true. And I would have to confirm it numerous times in different ways, um, Mm. as well as have research to back it up and things like that before I would believe it. So, so I'm, (laughs) I'm the biggest skeptic on things. I do. I, it's funny. I do. I do like the historical part of it. The, when it comes to UFOs and the, um, I love historical inaccuracies or historical um, things that shouldn't exist. Or, you know, I, I love to watch, I, I will admit, I love to watch ancient aliens and, and there's always the part where I'm watching. I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's not true. There's no way. And then there's a few where I'm like, well, you know, that, that may be, you know, or having to explain these things. Like I'm a big fan of um, Oak Island. I'm a really, I, I read the the Reader's Digest article when I was a kid too. And when they finally, um, when they bought the property and they started the show, like I was glued to it. You know, I, I don't know what it is. I don't, I'm like, but something's up, you know, yeah. and you know, and my ex-wife would always, I'd be watching. She's like, it's a hole in the ground. And I'm like, no, it's so much more than that. There's so much more to it. You know, is it the Templars or is it, you know, an American, is it American treasure or is it go the, the Persians or the. Well, and that's, that's, what's interesting with how I still got so interested, you know, because spirits and stuff and cryptids, whatever in my life, I grew up in the mountains, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're always part of my life. So it wasn't anything new or exciting. I mean, it was exciting. I, not really because I had always, it had always been there, you know, it wasn't something I was searching for is just how my life was. And so once I started finding, getting messages of historical events or accuracy or things that had never been reported, I'll, you know, show will come on. Spirits will show me this too. She'll just, my TV will pop on in the middle of the night and some, cause I don't normally watch TV. So if something comes on my TV, I'm meant to watch it or it's a Mm. message. And so it'll come on and there'll be a part that I'm like, mm, that's not right. And I'll know that because I've, I've been, I've, I've been shown it before. I've experienced it before or whatever. And I'm like, and so that's where it's exciting to me that, um, all these things, plus the history and stuff. Yeah. As far as. So, so wait, no, I'm not letting you off the cryptids though. What? Cause I come from, so I was, I was born and raised in, in, in Washington state. And so I was born with Bigfoot, like Bigfoot and Sasquatch was like, you grew up. I mean, the, the mascot for the Sonics, people don't realize it used to be Weedle, who was a, who was a Bigfoot. That was the mascot for the basketball I, team back I in the seventies. Yeah. He was a big hairy guy still on the side. Uh-huh. And, um, and when you grow up in an area like that, you believe because you go out oh. in those woods and you, you get lost and you're like, totally, I could, you know, even to this day, I'm like, of all of the, the cryptids, you know, one of the ones I, I probably most believe of a possibility would be Bigfoot or something, a Yeti or a Sasquatch or something like that. So definitely that's one I it's one I kind of pull for. That's one I'm kind of like, well, yeah, I'm hoping that one's real. And I I'm hoping we get some proof. Kind of, you, you know, it, it's kind of like the ocean. We don't they discover mm-hmm. different species that, that we've never, never seen before. Um, yeah, yeah. all the time science does even even in other countries and forests and stuff there's other animals discovered that have never they're like what is this yeah. you know, i just read about um dra- i have a dragonfly tattoo dragonflies being one of the oldest prehistoric insects giant dragonflies mm-hmm. because they said they might be coming back and i'm like wait Ooh. a minute i'm like wait a minute this kind of <laughs> makes sense though like what if all of you know, all these people saying they're seeing angels or mothmen or all these other things are giant dragonflies. Like that makes sense. <laughs> you know well, what you've I seen mean? The, is it the every once in a while there's a report that I mean, you're from New Mexico. I mean, mm-hmm. you are so there were always those reports of um pterodactyls, modern yeah. day pterodactyls yeah. in the southwest, you know. There's the argument right there. It's like, okay, is it a con? People are like, oh, it's a condor. It's like, eh, you know. But if you've ever been in a cave like Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico, you'd be like, oh man, there's probably there's probably vampires in here. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's like <laughs> I mean, that's another one of those things that you'd be there and you'd be like, okay, yes, something else probably lives here that we will never know because they don't even there are lakes in New Mexico that d- they call them the bottomless lakes, you know? Mm-hmm. So 
Um, it, it's same with the caves, same with um, where I grew up. We had the cliff dwellings, the, you know, mm-hmm. um, so many caves, so many um, things that just aren't, there's, there's even animals in New Mexico that, that are only in New Mexico, nowhere else in the world, you know, like um, the Gila monster. I had those in my backyard and and that's not found. I don't believe that's found anywhere else besides the Gila wilderness, which is in New Mexico. So huh. um, no, I didn't know that. See, I'm on the show and I'm learning new things. That's why I love doing the interviews and, <laughs> and podcasts and the whole thing, a radio, because it's like you're always learning something. You know, there's a there's a, a state representative in Oklahoma that I'm trying to get on my show who was putting out a three million dollar bounty on Bigfoot. But the idea was not to kill him. The idea was to be able to capture him alive, bring him in for testing, and then re-release within a certain um, amount of time back out in the wilderness. I'm trying to get him on my show because I want to talk to him about that. I'm like, where did you come up with this idea? How's it going? You know? <laughs> okay. And, and so as a person, I know you're like, oh, no. <laughs> but that's why that's why I do my show because I'm just like I hear these things and I'm like I have got to talk to this person for an hour. Yes. And, and just I sit have them down. been, you know, I have weird stuff. So I've been experimenting on stuff, even by doctors and stuff, my entire life for multiple reasons. Um, and that's that's how I feel. That's I maybe that's you know, fine. it's not going to go well. You know, maybe, yes, go. maybe that's it's like telling a kid they're you know, they're, they're going to get shots and you're like, it's it's fine. It's not going to hurt. Yeah. It's, it's, it'll be fine. It's just a giant no. needle. They'll probably hold you down or going to the dentist or something. You're like, it's not. It's no bright lights like strap you to a chair. So, like, no, it's it's no. it'll go badly. It'll go very badly. I've seen E.T. It'll go very yeah. badly. So when I hear these things as a person who's also very empathic, you know, towards animals and people and everything, I'm like, so you want to capture this thing, you know, do whatever you want to it and then release it just for your own curiosity. Right. Right. So how would you like that? You know know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. (laughs) But then people have a problem with alien abductions and I'm like, but. And I have, I have argued this because, you know, of my abduction experiences, I have people argue that there's some that have never had an experience that would love to be abducted and beg to be abducted all their life. And I'm like, uh, okay, till you see the predator or something, you might change your mind, you know, doing something you don't want them to do. But anyways, that's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> People ask me why the positive and negative experiences with that. And I'm like, well, it's no, you have to come to terms with it. If you don't, if you can't stop it and you can't keep it from happening and you can't, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I think of it as us um, dissecting frogs in mm-hmm. science class or people having cattle to to farm and raise and eat or like chickens for eggs or whatever yeah. because farmers don't have they don't have an issue with their cattle they love their cattle they raise them for that but it's not it's not like it's anything against the cow when they're going to kill it to eat it it's just it's a circle of life well and there's always something Degr- bigger on the you know, yeah I mean Neil deGrasse Tyson has the the whole idea that why would another race be interested in us how full of our ego we are to think that another race uh, another civilization will want to come here and deal with us and I, and i'm kind of with, i'm I, i'm like why i think we're fascinating and it's like you have it's like we're a big reality show and it's like you're going to come in and you're going to be able to find out whatever you want right but then you have you have the stories are are you know they're they're they always seem to be one or the other end of the spectrum they're either at one end of the spectrum where it's experimentation you know, and there's the whole joke about the probing and, you know, all of that, or it's somebody at a trailer park that gets kidnapped or, you know, that whole thing. And then at the other end of the spectrum, there's the, the breeding aspect of it. <laughs> That's their what? <laughs> That's 
alienated cousin or something. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know, and then the other end you have, you know, there's the famous case from, I want to say it's uh, South America where the guy got kidnapped and they give him this beautiful alien woman to impregnate. And he's yeah. like, look at me. I'm the internet. I'm the interstellar stud. So yeah. it's, you know, there's never, I, I want the one in the middle where they sit down and play poker with you or something right. and just, you know, have a beer and say, what's um, going on? And, and I think that's what happens when you become more open. So even as, you know, as, as a journalist and, and writer and artist and stuff, I'm sure you understand in, in the, when you put things in that perspective, mm-hmm. The more open, just like I, I was talking about, some people just stick to one genre of music or art or whatever their entire career, which is fine if if that's what they love to do, you know. But then there's other people that start branching out and experiment. Get it's it's kind of scary with art to be like, oh well, I'm good at this kind, but I, I don't know how this is gonna go, or I'm good at this this fashion of writing, but it's kind of scary to branch out and completely change to a different one. So it's, it's the same with anything else, you know, in my, in my opinion, once I branched out in spirituality from just human spirits and was more open instead of being afraid of ghosts and afraid of monsters and all this other stuff, being more open to it and looking at it from a different perspective, Hmm then more started to appear in my life. It's like, then I, it's, it's law of attraction, but with cryptids. So <laughs> that just, See that, that fascinates because then that, that starts getting the idea of the soul and that starts yeah. getting the idea of what is consciousness. And, you know, there, that's a whole amazing um, discussion to have because, you know, there's the argument like, do animals have souls or do, are they conscious? Absolutely. Where's the level of consciousness in, in life? You know, is, is a dog, truly conscious or is it just reacting or you could go down to an amoeba you know we don't know we can't hop into somebody's with a scientific measurement you know you can't sit down you can't measure consciousness can you imagine if we could like that animal's 75 percent conscious or you know yeah (laughs) and you know people try to measure consciousness um as far as in the spirit world because there's energy that's just residual that's not necessarily conscious but then you get into all these things that imitate Mm -hmm. uh anything they want i mean you could argue that scientifically that a virus has a conscious if if you wanted to you know what i mean because it evolves you could you could argue that and we've seen superhero movies that they do (laughs) so some of them aren't superhuman. Um, last couple of years, we have to wonder about yeah. <laughs> just life in general. Yeah. But you could take it, you could almost, I mean, to, to take a dark spin on it, and I guess it's the, you know, the writer in me is to then go, okay, well, then as a human being, could, would we then look at a human being and say, oh, well, that human is only 80% conscious, or they mm-hmm. only have an 80, okay, are they less of a person? Then do we start being prejudiced against a certain group of the population because we are, they aren't what we consider a fully conscious yeah. person. I mean, that's a dangerous path. But, and I think, you know, and that's, that's, that's why I was, I try to tell people because I think once they can relate it to a field they're so passionate about, as far as like paranormal, when you start relating it to spirits and cryptids and stuff, people are always mm. like, Trish, why, why everywhere you go, you have all, all the evidence you want if you want or like my friends when they're around me they're like something you just have like random stuff like running around your house and fairies and all this other i mean that are witness to this stuff and they're like Mm -hmm. why does that happen to you i'm like because well for one i didn't ever have a specific expectation of how something how a spirit should look act nothing you know i wasn't because i grew up i was pretty much you know living under a rock half my life so i didn't I wasn't exposed to, to the outside world in that manner. But um, so it's kind of the same with people, you know, because I don't see spirits or cryptids or anything as different. I don't categorize them as different like races. You know, I'm not I'm not prejudiced to Bigfoot or gargoyles or whatever, you know. You know, I mean, I just right. see them all as something as beings, as as, as life energy forms, like they're souls. just life. 
as souls that to communicate with, um, you know, so, and I'm open to whatever message. I don't, I don't see the good or evil because anyone is a villain in someone's story. I mean, Mm. you know, I mean, Bigfoot, Harry and the Henderson showed us that in in what the (laughs) eighties. Yeah. He was like a vegetarian. They only got mad when somebody was trying to protect his family, you know, Mm -hmm. or tried to hit him with a car. It's the same with humans. Or yeah. bears, nothing or spiders, you know, they don't, most things aren't aggressive until you poke them enough. So, yeah. Yeah. um, so that's, so that's interesting. You say that, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it goes back. I was going to ask about that. You have, um, a big interest interest in biking culture as well. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, um, where did that stem from? Be. So my family's very, uh, my family got very into genealogy. And so we did a lot of work. I mean, we're Norwegian. We knew that we're, my, we're like two generations removed from the old country. So, you know, we know that, but we got very into genealogy when I was young and we learned a lot about our family tree. And as we discovered that we're descended from, well, I always joke this. If you've ever seen the show Vikings on the history channel, that's home movies. My family's literally descended from Rollo who is the character on the show and William Longsword and the founders of Normandy. And as we got into it, we discovered that that's the Yingling dynasty. And then that they're descended from Kari and some of the other, the frost giants. And uh, oh this is fascinating for me. We've got, yeah, like we, you just opened up a whole new can of worms. For you. <laughs> oh, well, think about, I was, I joke too. I'm like, yeah, you know, he's just, did you see the movie Thor? And people are like, oh yeah, I love that movie. I'm like, yeah, that's a movie about genocide for me because he killed all the frost giants because I'm like, that's literally my descent. I don't, I'm being, I'm being a little flippant about it. But, um, so it was very, I think the reason is because I'm, I'm an agnostic. I'm not mm-hmm. a religious person. So I take my family and my family tree very seriously because all of these sacrifices that have been made, all of these people who have died, all of these people who have struck out on adventures. So I have the opportunities that I do. Who would I be not to take advantage of thousands of years of sacrifices? So my hundred years on this earth are valuable. Yes. And I, and I absolutely agree with that, but I was going to ask you, so do you believe in, um, and reincarnation doesn't even have to be religious in any way. Do you believe in that people can have multiple past lives, not in the same family line? I believe, and it's an ever changing as you as you learn more and you grow and you yes. and you have experiences my what i be, i don't believe the same thing now i did five years ago i don't know if right. i will in five years it, it evolves i kind of believe in the idea of the melting pot i believe that there's something very special about the human soul i believe in some sort of universal energy i believe that there's something different about who we are and the electricity that goes on in our minds and i tend to believe that when we go we all kind of go back into the melting pot and we kind of get pieces of everybody else or it shakes up and maybe some things that don't need to come back, don't come back. And I think it, that's kind of my, where I am and I can't prove it. And I try to prove everything, but that's just kind of what it vibes with me. And it makes the most sense because there's just something special about the human soul and there's something different about the energy. And that's what ascension is kind of about. It's about this idea of they cross over and and um, discover how this system works a little bit more. And that's, you asked me earlier, like, how do you, how do you come up with that idea? And it was a way for me to, through fiction, explore the ideas that I had and kind of work them out in a fictional setting and then share them with other people, spoon feed them a little bit and be like, well, this I think the way it might work. You know, what do you think? Right. You know, so. And I, I'm excited to read that one. I, I just started. Um, oh, my gosh. It's only on. Um, I couldn't find it. Oh, gosh. I forgot about Jurassic Galaxy, too. Oh, good grief. <laughs> Can I ask you about that one? <laughs> <laughs> you mean me fighting alien alien dinosaurs? <laughs> But, but what is popular, right? Like even in, even where I live, they have a whole dinosaur exhibit because Sue, you know, the oldest, um, Tyrannosaurus Rex Mm -hmm. 
is in our town right now. So it's oh, really? themed. And I was thinking oh. back, you know, I, I loved Jurassic Park when it first came out. And I went to the Universal Studios um, mm. Jurassic Park um, back in, I mean, it was probably 20 years ago in, in Florida. Um, yeah. yeah. Which was so cool, you know, it, but at the same and you know, now people, scientists are like, oh, we should we should really bring them back. I've I've read articles. They're like, this is this could, you know, there are scientists arguing now this could happen. I'm like, <laughs> let's not trip over our egos here and realize where we're at on the food chain. OK, I mean, <laughs> speaking <laughs> like, of bad ideas, get over Bigfoot and he's only like a few feet taller, apparently, than half the humans on Earth. So what are you going to do with a giant lizard? Like, <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> Man, I, it's, but, I think it's a bad idea. I play men, really. No. I, well, you know, I apologize. <laughs> but that's how I always picture it because, you know, women always have the motherly, like, protective mode. We're like, even, even if you look at lions and stuff, that's what it reminded me because if you watch lions and you look at, you know, the, the lion pride, they're always making, like, the logical choices here and, and then you you see the the lion king of the jungle and you know not afraid of anything and so they literally that's how I picture like these scientists and stuff I'm like are they just sitting around like <laughs> oh, man I had the shower idea <laughs> so hold on let me get a beer and uh, there's no women around right. <laughs> No one's gonna stop like, you know how cool it would be to do this and no that's not even how it comes about right because other because right then it's still illogical to everybody and they're like no no that would be okay and then somebody's like i dare you <laughs> and then men you like you have to take a dare i mean really like that's not cool if you don't so no that's our pride right there <laughs> that's you can't that's doesn't matter if you're seven or 70. Someone says, I dare you. And it's yeah. over. It's just, yep. you're done. And that's how <laughs> that will be the end of humanity. Giant dinosaurs again, Medidas. Well, it's been a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, so your, um, where can people find you on the open highway? I want, before we run out of time, I want to get, get your information out because there's so much cool stuff that you do. Oh, thank you. Well, the, the open highway is on all major platforms. Um, Apple, uh, Spotify, pretty much everywhere. So, you know, you can find it there. Uh, we're also on Instagram, open highway show. Um, Viking dog entertainment is kind of the overarching company, like you mentioned. So, it produces the show. It, we also do content. Um, we release truth and a couple other things. So Instagram, vikingdogentertainment.com. And then you also mentioned, you know, we didn't get to talk about it very much, but you talked about, we mentioned the wolves. And, you yes. know, if I could, like really quickly. Absolutely. Um, so wolves are very important to me. A few years ago, I got to go out to Acton and to Wolf Connection and spend some time with them. And it's a very life-changing experience when a wild animal allows you to be in its world. So ever since then, I've done everything I can to help. So um, if you go to thevikingdogstore.com or go to our other sites, it'll patch through. We have a line of wolf clothing and some other items. And 100% of the proceeds from, from those items go directly to Wolf Rescue. You know, we have shirts and, and some other things. And some of them are kind of cool. I think some of them are kind of cool. I, I think they're amazing. Find, no, find no, your pack. Some of the, gem, the gem clothes. Hey. <laughs> um, so definitely, you know, that's, even if you don't like, it's really important with some of the stopping the hunt and, and some of the other things that are going on and then, you know, keeping them on the endangered species list and the, the situation in Yellowstone is another really important one that I, that I try to do what I can to help out with. And, um, so if you thinking, can help out, it'd be great. The, uh, about that worldwide, a lot of our listeners are from, from other countries and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Wolves aren't located everywhere, obviously. Um, and, and for, well, I mean, for obvious reasons, but, but as far as you always hear about, um, all over the world, everybody's familiar with, um, 
saving the rhinos and the elephants and which mm -hmm. is very important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying that at all, but because that's, that's just a, you know, more well-known um, animal on the extinction list, but because a lot of people don't know that, that wolves have been endangered and, and, you know, abused and all these other things, um, mm -hmm. killed, slaughtered, all, um, People There's bounties out on them. People don't realize that. Yeah. There's bounties out on them. They get paid if they shoot them. There's even people in the U.S. that don't realize that that goes on. Um, yeah. I've learned all over the place. Um, mm. So, so it is such a huge importance to to check that out. Um, also, tell me about the movie Truth that you directed. Um, Truth is a it's a dramatic film that uh, I did a, a couple of years ago. It's been out now for a couple of, it came out during the pandemic. It's about an accused war criminal who is um, offered amnesty if he f basically fesses up for his part in a revolution in an internment camp during a fictional civil war. And it's got some twists in it. It really explores the ideas of be careful what you wish for. What does, what is one person's truth? And uh, it's, it's, it's not a family film. It's not a Disney film. I'll warn people there. It takes some very serious subjects, but it did really well in the film festival circuit. We were really, really lucky. We won a lot of awards. Um, it actually went to a film festival in Russia. That's what, that's and, what I was going to say. That's, that's so yeah. interesting and ironic. Yeah, they flew, they flew me over there and the Russian government, this was in 2018, so this was before everything going on now, but um, I got to meet the Russian people. And one thing, I you know, just take a second, like, the Russian people that I met were absolutely amazing and they are totally different than, than, than what you think. And it's a different situation than when you get to spend some time with them and talk to them and actually understand that they're people just like us and that their mm -hmm. government and those choices are different than what they're going through. It's, it's just, it was a life changing experience. And, um, so it's, I was really, really proud of it. Um, we, like I said, uh, Rachel Aleg is the co-star in it with me and she, if it hadn't been for her, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do this. It all takes place in real time in one room in, in, in from beginning to end. And it just How pulls out the it? story. It's about a hundred minutes, about a hundred, 108 That's minutes. Amazing, I think, though, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I'm really proud of it. It's one of those things where it's like, nobody said, everyone said we couldn't get it done. Every, no. every, every person we ran in is like, this is impossible. Uh, turned in the script to some producers and the original script is only 60 pages long. And they're like, that means you have a 60 minute movie. I'm like, nope. And the first cut was three hours long. So we went in and we cut it down and really tightened it up. And um, it's really one of those movies where I hope people watch and have a discussion afterwards yes. and, and, and be like, these are the themes. So it's available um, uh, Amazon and um, uh, Tuvi and Tubi and all the different places, Blu-ray, DVD, you know, there's links. If you go to Viking Dog Entertainment, there's links to it. And um, I'm, I'm just anybody who wants to have a discussion and, and is willing to go down some rabbit holes, I think you'll enjoy it. And so um, since we're almost out of time mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to answer me now if you don't want to, I have some very philosophical connection, especially being on this network because that but but people in mind that I know would would love that and to have a discussion so would you would you be willing to come back um because I can have multiple people I, I believe in, in stream art that um at once um so you could come back and answer our questions while we have a discussion about it that'd be amazing. <laughs> I think that would be love, amazing oh I love I love I love talking. I, <laughs> you know, I love, I, absolutely. That'd be fun. You know, especially if people had specific things they wanted to mull over or, you know, Q and A's. I, I love them, especially when people are like going back and forth. We would and, really have to cut it back or make it like a 10 series thing because the people, <laughs> I, I mean, this is how it goes with everybody. I know we, we end up going on like, I'm like, a we, you know, my brains never stop. So <laughs> there needs to be a, a mediator or a <laughs> yes. somebody like a referee, <laughs> someone keeping us on, on, online. <laughs> no, that and would be fun. That, that you know, would be fun. Absolutely. After my own heart. That's funny. <laughs> yes. Cause that's what he does too. That <laughs> you met Joe before we came on. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and that's, um, that's what I love about this is all the different being able to respect and at the same time 
stop and kind of look at everything from a different perspective. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's the amazing thing about um, movies and, and books and art and everything that makes you think about something that you never thought about before, you know, yeah. um, from someone else's, even from someone else's, um, especially when you do like a cultural immersion thing, like in, like in Russia, um, you know, I, I studied in, in another country when I was younger and it was the same thing. I was like, wow, nothing I thought was, was factual about that. We do that yeah. in our own countries for that matter. People think that New York is just all city. I lived in upstate New York and it's beautiful. It's little villages, small towns. People are amazing there. It's mm. not the hustle and bustle of the city. You go to California, it's not all city, you know, yeah. but we all- I live in the middle of LA. I live in the middle <laughs> of LA and there's deer and I go to bed with, owl. I hear owls when I go to bed. There's a, there's a winery across the street from my house wow. and I'm in the middle of Los Angeles. So yeah, so, so yeah preconception. It's and people think that Kansas, we're all like little bumpkins. That well, okay. I mean, I'm not as refined as as uh, most probably, so I can't represent Kansas very well. But, but um, yeah, yeah, it's not all. You know, it's not all farmland. New Mexico is not all desert. I lived in the mountains there, mm -hmm. so it's it's absolutely even in our own backyard. How many people actually know how? I haven't even began to visit all the places in my own city. That are fascinating to me nor do, do i even know about half of them you know because we yeah. don't we don't ever look in our own backyard so, where are you i'm you're in kansas in i'm in topeka oh you're in kansas oh wow yeah there's yeah. so much there i've driven through that state so many times yes. and, stopped. and yeah. i discover more and more all the time i'm like wow aside from superman being from here i mean there are so there's so much history i mean even civil war things like that mm -hmm. starts in kansas and mm -hmm. um i mean it's the heartland so <laughs> that's what's it makes sense the the west you know route 66 all all kinds of things yeah. besides just dorothy and the wizard of oz came from here so <laughs> <laughs> but we um i think we are running out of time joe hasn't kicked okay. me off yet. He's, oh <laughs> <he's probably laughs> yep he said say bye-bye all right so there we go i'm gonna have well, to have you on again fun. after i collaborate with people to watch this to watch truth i advise um, advice. Um, I hope our listeners do, um, gosh, enjoy all of your, um, I'm almost through the first book I downloaded and going to be, um, obviously diving into the other ones as soon as possible. So I would like to have you back on, but thank you so much for joining us. And well, thank you. It was a blast. I had a lot of it fun. It was. And I <laughs> hope, um, yeah, I'll, I'll list all of your information links below too, and then Thank you, you. Can follow. You can follow Eric on again. What your link one more time? Hit me up. I like Instagram because it's a friendlier place. So start your adventure at I'm the Angry Viking is my handle, and if you go there, you'll find me and you'll be introduced to my entire world. So the Angry Viking. The Angry Try Viking. it there. Okay, yeah, that's me. <laughs> All right, Eric. Well, thank you so much. And listeners, thank you for joining us. Good evening.